Let's go back to this extraordinary story from Lebanon where Israel has managed to blow up thousands of pages and walkie-talkies that have been in the pockets of Hezbollah members. Joining me to discuss more is former Foreign Minister Alexander Downer, live from the great city of Adelaide. And Alexander, I have to say you're uh, looking a bit Malcolm Turnbull tonight in your uh, leather jacket there. <laughs> Well, he's, he's not the only person on the planet who has a leather jacket. I, I think George W. Bush from time to time wore leather jackets. Well, that's good, actually. And I remember remember when Obama wore his uh, cream suit and, and everyone went wild. It's good to see a bit of uh, diversity in fashion in politics. The, I was saying to Alex Rivchin uh, earlier tonight, this story, these pages, walkie-talkies now that have been blown up in Lebanon, is just one of the most extraordinary bits of military work I have ever seen. I think it's probably one of the most extraordinary things we, you've ever seen in your lifetime as well. Uh, yes, it's absolutely brilliant because it's very targeted. It's obviously by definition targeting people who are operatives within Hezbollah, which is a terrorist organisation run and financed by the Iranian regime. And uh, so instead of putting civilians at risk, it's targeted the people who are directly responsible for continual attacks against Israel and who are determined to eliminate the state of Israel from the map of the earth. So um, who can blame the Israelis um, and secondly, what an incredibly clever operation this has been. Well, the US says that they had no knowledge of it. I just can't wrap my head around how you managed to do something like that undetected and get away with it. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there have been various um, uh, articles written over the last few hours um, uh, positing why uh, how this can have happened. I'm, I'm not sure of the technology involved, but I assume what's happened here is that Mossad has managed to intercept the shipments of these, uh, uh, both the pages and the walkie-talkies, and then insert explosives into them, um, and then or else swap the whole of the shipment for their own versions of the walkie-talkies and the pages. And, um, and then they've been delivered as was planned by Hezbollah and the Israelis have blown them up. But um, Israel, Israel is sending out a very strong message. Mm. If you want to try to destroy Israel, this is what will happen to you, so stop it. And there will be no more attacks on these people at all if they stop attacking Israel. But they have been firing missiles and rockets day by day into northern Israel. 63,000 people have had to be evacuated from northern Israel because of the constant attacks by Hezbollah into that part of the country. If they stop doing this, then there won't be these retaliatory measures. But um, get them to stop it. Uh, they're fanatics. They're fanatics. Well, you'd think it's, it's unlikely, probably even more unlikely now that they will stop. But um, uh, how many more of these attacks do you think we will see or attacks of this style from Israel? If they've managed to do it with the pages and the walkie-talkies, who knows what's next? Well, I don't think I necessarily accept the premise of your question, which is that uh, Hezbollah uh, will just continue to attack. I mean... Um, they know that their lives are at risk if they attack the Israelis. Uh, they don't know where Israel will come from next. They don't know what technology they can use or if they can use any technology. How are they going to communicate with each other except by carrier pigeon and uh, <laughs> by um, messengers <laughs> on foot? I mean, it, it's going to be extraordinarily difficult for them to run these operations in future. But ultimately, what viewers have to remember is behind all of these attacks on Israel lies Iran. Mm. Iran is arming and instructing these people to attack Israel, and Iran wants to eliminate the state of Israel. Um, and this is an existential struggle for the Jewish people and for the Israelis. Um, and for us as Westerners, it's a civilizational challenge. Um, so we should get right behind the Israelis and the Iranians should be uh, put on notice that they are running the risk of war with the West by continuing these attacks on Israel.
Well, let's hope they heed the warning that they've been sent. Uh, while we're on Israel, I mentioned this earlier as well, but we saw overnight uh, the vote at the UN, this motion put up by the Palestinian Authority asking for, for Israel to pull out of Gaza entirely. The US asked us not to vote against it, which technically we did, but we abstained from the vote. I mean, just absolutely weak from the federal government to not take a stance. Well... Do you know what's right and what's wrong? Do you know what's moral and what's immoral? It is right to support Israel's right to exist and the Jewish people to have a homeland. It is right to support that. It is wrong to give comfort to terrorists who uh, killed, tw what, 1,200 young people in the south of Israel and took hundreds hostage and killed some of the hostages and still hold others. That's wrong. Um, so when it comes to voting in the United Nations for what it matters, when it comes to voting, Australia should be morally clear. Mm. Uh, Australia should be crystal clear and vote for what is moral and what is right. Instead, what the Australian government does for domestic political reasons is abstain. And it's shameful on a moral issue to abstain. It's shameful. 100%. And by the way, Alexander, I'm enjoying your columns in the advertiser. Keep it up.